Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. We got um, a little bit of an update and um, some extras to add to our um, project with the Pandanus Imperator, the Emperor Scorpion. Um, excuse me, I've got terribly right. Ow. Um, the Emperor Scorpion. Now, um, you would have remembered we've got some youngsters. And we went to the Brighton show um, last week and we managed to pick up a pair, an adult pair as well. So the idea being that this is going to literally catapult our breeding program right into the forefront. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to do a simple rehouse on the, the pair that we've bought. We'll show you them. And then once that's all done, we'll have a little look but the youngsters that we've been growing on that you would have seen some months ago. Now, with these guys, it's a very, very simple, simple procedure. And what we're going to do is we are going to house them in these tubs here. Now, as you can see, these are 14-litre um, tubs, and uh, we've already drilled some holes all the way around, so they've got ventilation through there. And we've also got ventilation in the lid as well you can see that i think you can probably see so there's plenty of plenty of airflow now what we're going to do with these in terms of um actual soil we're going to use some potting compost this is just our regular potting compost this is real fluffy stuff this i like this stuff a lot this is one that we get from one of our local places and we're going to have a bit of a mix. So we're going to have that in there. So that's the fluffy stuff. And then we've got another pot in compost, which is much heavier. And as you can see there, this is more sand based. It's got more sand in it. Yeah. Whereas this is a bit more loamy. So we're going to put that in there as well. You notice how that just goes straight in. So we're going to put that in there like that. And then, just to get fancy, we are going to add... Do you know what? I've had this bag of stuff for ages and I've never known what I'm going to use it for. So this is going to be ideal. So we're going to mix a bit of this in there as well. What is it? This is what they call terror bark. Oh, actually, look at that. It's actually got a picture of a scorpion on it. Look at that. You don't normally buy that sort of thing, Dave. No, this is this is from the spider shop. And uh, this actually came in. Um, a chap had to give up his collection, and uh, he, he brought it all over. And this was one of the things that he brought over in a box. And uh, we got chatting about it, and um, I sort of said, you know, I don't really ever use this sort of stuff, only because I'm tight. I'm, I'm, I don't spend unless I have to. So we've been we've been having it hanging around for ages. So we're going to mix it all in like that. Gives it a little bit of texture. You see the camera struggling a little bit there. Shorty, can't quite see in the box. Here we go. All right, I'm going to do that. And then what we're going to also do, this is something else that we've shown you guys before as well. This is sphagnum moss. Now, we get this from the garden centre. And as you can see here, it's basically designed for hanging baskets. This is what they put around the, the hanging baskets. And it's perfect for our enclosures. So we can add a bit of that. Now, um, as we were saying before, about being a bit on the tight side, and we don't like spending our hard-earned cash, we can buy this. This is, in fact, a... Uh, just tell you somewhere on here how many litre bag this is. It's a big, big bag. Massive. Jumbo bag, they call it. 
I forget how many litres it is, but it's a lot. And this was actually around about £10. And you will get oh, loads of enclosures out of this stuff. Absolutely loads. Whereas if you're buying the other stuff with some fancy reptile or spider name on it, you're going to end up paying about £10 for about this much. So, uh, you know, be sensible and shop around, get your stuff nice and cheap. We don't care what it's called as long as it does the job. That's all that really matters. So, we're going to just mix a bit of that in there, like so. Why have you chose this particular mix, Dave? We're going to mix this up because the Emperor Scorpion, it does like a little bit of humidity. Doesn't need a huge amount, but within these boxes, with the air holes and around the sides and everything else, and the warmth in our room, these will dry out to a certain extent. And by sticking this moss, moss in there, and just by literally mixing it all in there, we've got the, the potting compost and we've got our sand-based compost as well. This is all going to help to hold it all together and it's going to retain a certain amount of that moisture, which is what we're after. That's what we need. Right then. So we've got some good old bark here that we've managed to um, collect from the wild. Bone dry, really, really dry stuff. So we're going to put a piece of that in there. Now these guys do like a piece of flat bark. And that's because they, they like to get underneath. And they, they like to feel quite tight under there. So... It gives them security. And then we've also got some moss that we've collected from the wild as well. And you notice this stuff, look, we don't clean it, we don't sterilize it. This is exactly how we picked it up outside. There is no need to do anything to it. So we're gonna put a bit of that in there, literally just on the side there. We don't, we don't, we don't want a lot. You just want it literally just to tie that piece of wood in there like so. Nice and simple. We'll save that bit for another job. We've got our water bowl there. And we'll do that one there like that. There we go. And as you can see, it's a very, very simple, simple setup. And the other reason we've gone for this setup, rather than in one of our glass enclosures is because ideally we want to breed these scorpions and it's going to be an awful lot easier for us to do it in a simple enclosure like this so when we introduce our male scorpion into our female's enclosure he's got plenty of room to move around do his stuff he's not going to be cluttered with all of the normal stuff that we'd have in maybe one of our planted display enclosures you know so that's why we're keeping them nice and simple can i just be a pain and ask that? you're always a pain my love <laughs> what's different with the stone in the thing is that a different substrate why have we used soil rather this than yes that? yes this what we've seen here this stuff that they got in here i'm not sure what they call it but it's literally just there for the show it makes the scorpion look bigger Okay. Makes it look better. It's nothing to do with anything else. Now, these come from um, Bugnut UK. Now, these would have been wild caught. They've come in wild caught. And what we've done is we bought a pair. So, the one with the blue dot on it is the male. And then we've got one with the pink dot, which is a female. Now, um, these guys are generally very, very well behaved. They don't tend to be bad. Now, I don't know if you can see that under this light, but this guy is actually more green than he is black. I don't know if the cameras can pick that up. But he's, they look very, very black, but they are, in actual fact, more greeny coloured. That's very yeah. difficult on the... Yeah. But as you can see, they're a very big, impressive scorpion. These are the, the largest of the scorpions. They are really, really big, heavy set things. 
And you can tell these apart from like the Asian forest scorpions by their claws here. They're much heavier. They've got bigger discs here. The Asians don't tend to be quite so solid, quite so big. Now, in temperament wise, these guys are normally well behaved, quite docile. The sting on them, as you can see, it's a very, it's a big, impressive sting there. But they're very, very mild. So if you do get stung by one, it's said to be no worse than just like a, a bee sting. It's, it's not particularly bad. All depends on how you're going to react to it, mind. But it shouldn't be too bad. Now, how do we sex a scorpion? Well, we can have a look underneath. And what we're looking for is the, the fins underneath, and you'll see them. So if I pick him up, we can have a look. Hopefully, it'll just hang there nicely and not be too bad. All right, let's watch your fingers. All right. And you see the, the fins underneath. See them there? Just behind his last set of legs. Yes, we can see yeah, them. Yeah, you see them? Well, where the feathery bits are, the males have, I believe, longer feathers than the females. You see that? Very, very feathery. So what we'll do, we'll drop him in here. You notice, there you go, you can see how look, they're extending out now, where he's hanging. This isn't causing him any stress, by the way. This is, this is, to is moving, so we did get a good look. Totally fine. You notice, you see, he's got no aggression there. He's, he's good as gold. What a beautiful, beautiful specimen. And you can see now the size. I mean, he's as big as my hand. He is huge. And then we have here, this is the female. Now, one thing you'll also notice here as well is when you compare them, he is quite a bit longer than her. He does. Yeah, he does appear to be longer. But look at how much fatter she is. See in the sides here? She really is quite big. So what we'll do is we will do the same here with her, and we'll pick her up as well. You've got to watch it, because when if they get you with these pincers, they are very, very strong. It looks like he's going to disappear. Just... Doesn't he look beautiful? You see a little bit of that green now? Yep, yeah, you see that green coming out. Now when we put these under a black light, they will actually glow in the dark. Amazing things. Absolutely amazing. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll have a look here. You see the fins here? You see how much they're much shorter? Not quite as focus. not quite as feathery. Yeah? Yes, quite. Yeah. Dark. Just so we get a good look. Oh, it's made me out of focus. You see that? Yeah. Now you can see there, she's sort of, she's relaxed a bit now. Doesn't cause them any harm doing this. And it's the safest way to actually deal with them. So aren't they just impressive? Absolutely impressive. You can also note now, with the stinger, how much thicker the segments are on his tail compared to hers. He is much heavily, heavier built than she is. You can see? You can't put them together a little bit more. Yeah, well, we're not going to do that just yet. They will, have their, they will have their time. But there is quite a difference between them. And you can see where she is quite fat. Now, being a wild caught specimen, she may be gravid now. We never know. But we're going to try and get them together, and we're going to try and pair them. And we'll see what we can do. It'd be a lovely thing to breed them. There isn't enough of these guys in the hobby. Absolutely fabulous looking things. Right, so that's them. Now, we can have a little look here. 
This here is one of our individuals from, from one of the tiny ones. Now these have molted a couple of times. Aww. Look at the difference in the size. You see how much smaller that is? That's got a huge amount. And if we can um, sort of like see, oh, get it all. Let me look at her this first. Get them all in the picture. But you see, they're quite small. They're tiny when they first pop out. You have to be careful, so we don't want to don't want him jumping out and in there. Now, if we can go pan back a little bit on the camera, you might just get both this one and that adult. If you bring it down a little bit. She's going to be out of the box in a minute. There we go. You see the difference in the sizes now. So this this young one here has got an awful lot, and that's my finger. Um, excuse me. Right, okay. You see they don't understand English. Right. As you can see, there's nothing to worry about. They're not dangerous. No, they're not gonna. They're not gonna hurt us. All right, let's get you on there. All right. I'm jealous. So we're gonna put him in there. We don't know what sex these are. Actually, we've we've not sexed these yet. So that's that one. Now we've got three of them. Now one of them is quite an interesting one. I can't remember which one it is now. It's this one. Look at that. Right. This is the smallest one of the three, and as you would have remembered, we own, we had one, you know, th this was the smallest one. Now you notice there, this one's lost a claw. You see that? The claw's gone. Now unfortunately, in its first molt it had, it lost the claw. And I don't know why, I'm not sure what happened, but it came out without a claw. Now, um, to start with, what we done, we were giving this one pre-killed food, and it's it's managed to molt out two more times. Now, um, with just this one claw. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to regenerate it. I'm pretty sure that the, these guys don't regenerate limbs like spiders do. Um, I may be wrong. If someone knows differently, let us know. Um, so what we done was we, we pre-killed food. And uh, it's growing, growing really, really well. And it's actually now starting to catch food itself. So um, hopefully, missing that claw isn't going to be such a bad thing. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get by. It would have been interesting to see how it would have done in the wild state. Now this one here, look at this one's very impressive. This is a beautiful one, this one. You can see the difference there. You can really see that green at times. Yeah, you just catch it on the light and it's it's wonderful. It's got like that effect that oil has, that iridescence. Mm. Very, very pretty. So now we have we've got five of them in the collection now which is absolutely amazing and as you can see now these guys have settled down a little bit we'll give them a couple of days now and then we'll feed them now one of the other things is if you if you're really into your you know you want to get scorpions and things like that do bear in mind these guys are nocturnal so they're out and about of a night time you can see the weight she's carrying there She's looking really, really plump, which could be a bit of good luck for us. So, when it comes to food, these guys will take on anything that's suitably sized. Um, now, I do understand that the wild ones do prefer things like crickets rather than roaches, which is quite interesting. These small ones here, these are captive bred ones, the three youngsters. They're captive bred. And they will, in fact, take down anything, uh, be it roaches, crickets, you name it, they'll have a go. They really do like them. And we've also given them maggots, and they, they play with maggots, and they get munching on them as well. You can't feed so, them then. No, not at the moment. We will feed these another time, and we will see if we can get a bit of footage of that. But they are really, really wonderful things. Now, in terms of temperature, these guys come from Africa. 
So we're looking at uh, good daytime temperatures. I mean, you guys know we keep it 80 degrees in here and everything seems to thrive at that temperature. They do really, really well. And they can drop down at night. They can go quite cool at night. So it's going to be an interesting thing to see whether temperature has any differences or any variations on the breeding of them. What fabulous little beasties. They are like prehistoric. They are absolutely amazing. Now, um, we are going to try and do a little bit more with these. And I think we're going to, um, we're perhaps going to get some uh, Asian forest scorpions as well, which are another very common scorpion within the hobby. But they're also something that we really should be breeding more of, you know, in the hobby. Many of these beasties here are wild caught. So the more we can do with captive breeding programs, the better it's going to be for the wild populations. As we said, these guys in here, these imperators, these are all captive bred. So we've got captive bred ones here, wild caught ones here. We can hopefully mix them up in the future and get some really, really cool uh, bloodlines going. It's good to keep them mixed as possible. All right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, because I really do like these. These are very, very expensive nowadays. When I was a kid, we could buy these for five pound each. <laughs> and they were everywhere. They were the most common scorpion in the hobby. In fact, at one point, they were the only scorpion in the hobby. And they were like a fiver each. Bit different today. They're shockingly expensive today. But they're still wonderful things. Right then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider and also your scorpions. I'll see you soon, guys.